Hey, Tim here. In 21.4, you can now set up a subscription for flow completion. So essentially, you get an email when a prep flow has finished running. You can see here that I've actually got one. It says the flow run was successful. It's got my information on it, and it essentially has the name of the site, flow, and a few other bits of information. And more importantly, I can actually click on these links and go straight to the data source and check this out. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set these up for yourself. You can see here that I've actually got a subscription set up. That's the one that triggered the email I just showed you. Let me show you how to set one up for yourself. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over back to the overview tab because this is the actual flow that I was using. If you don't know how to get to a flow, just go to the explore tab, uh, then go to this little drop down and you can essentially filter down to all the flows you need just there. And once you've done that, you can go back to the flow that you need and you're pretty much set. Now you can see that this particular flow has a schedule. Uh, you can see the status of this uh, last run just a few minutes ago before I recorded this video. And the schedule is an hourly schedule. So what I'd like to do is set up an email that responds to that schedule to let me know when it's finished so that I can then know that some data is up to date essentially. So what I can do, if you go to the schedule task, you can see that this task is already here. You do need a schedule task for this to work. If you don't, you won't be able to create a subscription because the subscription needs to know which task to send the email after. It's a bit like a sort of follow on uh, request essentially. So if I go to the subscriptions tab, this is actually where you can set one of these up. You can see I have one here, but I'm going to click on this subscribe button just there. And once we've clicked on that, uh, we should get the option to set this up. Now you'll be asked to choose a frequency. So this is sort of weird because it, it should just sort of default to one of the frequencies you've already got. So you do have to select that from the drop down. If it's the only one, I think this should just default to that selection because if there's only one, what else are you going to pick? So um, if you hover over this little eye, you do get a bit of information about that flow and what's going on. So if I go ahead and click on that and I can say, look, send this to uh, myself in particular. I'll send it to uh, a few of my emails here so we can see all this uh, going on. You can uh, also just tick this box into me and uh, clear all of this and it will essentially just also work. Um, name the email however you want, subject, flow and everything else. You can also include a link to the published data source in case you want to go and check that out. Maybe you want to know when a data source has been updated so you can go do some work with it, maybe an ask data or something like that. But nonetheless, uh, you can go ahead and uh, include the name of the data source and the link data source, then hit subscribe. And that is pretty much the subscription setup. Once that's in there, it gets added into this particular uh, setup and you're good to go. Now, the reason you didn't see it get added there is because I actually already have that exact schedule there. So it's not going to set up a second one when the first one is already doing the job. So just to show you that that does work, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this just by clicking unsubscribe. Go ahead. That will disappear from the list. Go ahead in there. Go back in. Just set this up to send to myself. We'll leave everything else as default. We'll go ahead and click all the links. I did that super quick. And now when we hit subscribe, you see that it turns up again. So that's just something to be aware of. If you choose a schedule that already exists, then it's not going to set up a new one. But if you choose a schedule that is new, that the data source is subscribed to, then it will show up when you add it on here. So that's pretty much it. It's a nice sort of quality of life improvement. It's useful for people who want to know when a data source that they connect to in Tableau Prep has been up to date. So then they can hop in and go and do something or check something inside a Tableau. Maybe it's a weekly data refresh that's done by Tableau Prep. Maybe it's a process that you need to know exactly when it's done so you can go in and do something yourself. So maybe you take part of the next step of that. Maybe a workbook needs republishing as a result of this. Uh, whatever you're using it for, this is a nice quality of life improvement. Okay, thanks for watching. I uh, really appreciate your viewership. If you haven't done so already, check out all the other videos I've done on prep tiling and also uh, prep parameters. That one escaped me briefly for a moment. And also all the other videos I've done in the past and previous releases on Tableau Prep. Um, and yeah, by all means, uh, let me know if there's something missing that you'd like me to make a video of. Um, your viewership is much appreciated. Always love the uh, you know positive response I get on the channel. So thanks for watching. And uh, if you don't like what you're seeing, let me know what you'd like to see instead in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.